Hi everybody. Today I want to walk you through something that is a Common Core activity that you don't see written very often in books. And even when you do, the way that the books write it is very complicated. And so I want to talk to you all about distance along a directed line segment. So a line segment is uh, one that has, or it's part of a line that has a beginning and an end. A directed says that it has to go in a certain direction. Normally a line segment, the direction doesn't matter but a directed line segment is going to have a beginning and an end, a from and a to. And then we can find the distance very easily, but one of the things that's difficult is partitioning and finding a fraction of that distance along the line. And that's what I want to show you guys how to do today. So we have a Cartesian coordinate plane. It runs from negative 10 to positive 10 on the x-axis. It runs from negative 10 to positive 10 up the y-axis. And so I'm going to start off with two points. Um, we're going to have a point A that is going to be located at negative 7, 4, meaning from the origin, it's left 7 and up one, two, three, four. So here is a negative seven comma four. And then we have a point B, which is going to be located at eight negative six. So from the origin, this is located eight to the right and six down. So I go 8 to the right, and I go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And here will be my point B, 8, negative 6. And there's a line segment connecting these two. So let's break out my card, my straight edge, and I am going to connect line segment AB from point A to point B or from point B to point A. As I said, with a line segment, direction does not matter. But when we talk about a directed line segment, we need to know where's the beginning and where's the end. So for this particular question, they will tell you that it's going from A to B or that it's going from B to A. So don't assume that it's one or the other. They will tell you in this question. So the example that I want to do is going to be find the distance, find the distance, or find the point, rather, find the point that is seven tenths of the way from A to B. Now, if you're looking for a point halfway, that's easy. That's midpoint. You just take the points, you add them up, and you divide by two. But seven tenths of the way is different because it's not like I can multiply by 7 and divide by 10 or something anything like that it's a process and so what this is literally telling us is two things one 
we have to make this a directed line segment. So this one is going from A to B. So I'm going to put an arrow on here just to show that that's the direction that it's moving and it's starting here and it's moving here. Now this is asking us to partition this into 10 different pieces, 10 equal size pieces. That's, that's the definition of a fraction. A fraction tells you um, it's cut into whatever the denominator is equal pieces. So now I picked these two points on purpose because I wanted to give us nice numbers and we want to partition it into 10 different segments. So to do this, we need to understand what is the horizontal distance and what is the vertical distance. Horizontal distance and vertical distance. So from A to B, how far does it move horizontally? Well, it's moving from negative 7 all the way over here to positive 8. How far is that? Well, let's count boxes. 7 to get to 0, 1, 2, 3, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So from A to B, it has to go to the right 15. And then to get from here at positive 4 down to negative 6, we have to go 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And it's going to be negative 10 because it's moving in the negative direction. This is what we're going to call displacement. Displacement. Displacement is not only how far did it move, but its distance. It's also called a vector because it has a magnitude and a direction. So I'm going to keep track of these, a horizontal distance of 15 and a vertical movement of negative 10. And I'm going to use a special notation for this because we use parentheses to show a location, parentheses to show a point, I'm going to use angle brackets to show movement. 15 comma negative 10, and I'm going to put it in brackets, angled brackets, to show that's how far it's moved. Now, we don't always have the luxury of being able to look at a graph and count boxes. So one other not, not strictly legal, but perfectly workable method to do this is I'm going to take the two point, still in purple, I'm going to take the two point and I'm going to subtract the from point. This is the first thing I do. So it's going to what point? It's going to B. And B is at 8, negative 6. And I'm going to subtract A which is located at negative 7, comma 4. You may never have seen it stacked like this, but it's allowed. And you can treat it as you would any other parentheses. So if you have a minus outside parentheses, you're probably going to 
distribute the negative in. And that's what we're going to do here. So the negative moves inside. Negative negative 7 is positive 7. Negative 4 is negative 4. And then we make this plus. Because subtracting a negative 7 is the same as adding 7. Subtracting 4 is the same as adding negative 4. And then I can add straight down. 8 plus 7 is 15. Negative 6 plus negative 4 is negative 10. And I put angle brackets to show that it's movement. Notice we get the same number over here. So it really doesn't matter which way you do it, so long as you know you have to find this vector, this movement, first thing. So now it's asking us to partition this into 10 but we're only going to take seven of them. That's what seven tenths means. Of the ten equal sized pieces, we want seven. So I'm going to take this. Remember, of is a mathematical term meaning multiply. Anytime you see of, it means multiply. So my second step here is I'm going to take whatever I got in part one, and I'm going to multiply it by that fraction that I just got. So now, what was the answer I got in part one? Well, that was a vector showing right 15, down 10. And I want to multiply this by 7 tenths. So now, this is just like parentheses. I'm going to multiply everything inside by 7 tenths. So what is 7 tenths times 15? Well, 7 tenths times 15 is 10.5. What is 7 tenths of negative 10? Well, that's negative 7. So here is our actual movement along along this directed line segment. So the, the line segment moves right 15 and down 10, but we're only going to move 7 tenths of the way. So we're going to move somewhere down here. We haven't gone the whole way. We've only gone 70% of the way. So now keep in mind, I'm moving from so the last part here, I'm going to take this answer that I got in part two, and I'm going to add it to the location where I started, which is A. So I'm going to add it to the from. So what did I get here in part two? I got a movement of right 10.5 and down 7. And then I add it to whatever my starting location was, which in this case is negative 7, 4. So now movement from a point is going to give me another point. We'll call it C. It doesn't matter what the letter is. What is 10.5 minus 7? 10 minus 7 is 3.5 comes down. Negative 7 plus 4 is negative 3. 
there is the location that I want, seven-tenths of the way from A to B. So right three and a half and down three is right there. And there is my location C, which is 3.5 comma negative three. There are ways to check this. We could find this distance here using the distance formula. Special case of Pythagorean theorem. We could find this distance here using the distance formula. Special case of Pythagorean theorem. And we could show that this value is 7 tenths of this value. I'll leave that to you to do on your own for now. Practice and see what number you get if you switch this around and go from B to A. Leave the answer in the comments. I'll let you know if you got it right. Until then, have a good day. Thank you, everybody.